Thanks. Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, for being in this um, session today, which is uh, part of the Dragon's Dance um, uh, uh, series of sessions. Tomorrow we have Dragon's Den, where we hope several of you will pitch their, uh, their idea and their, their project. Uh, yesterday we had uh, an introductory session to the Business Canvas, a particular tool that can be used uh, for uh, developing a business case. And today in this session, we are going to get into a little bit more detail about your own uh, projects and uh, looking together with you uh, at uh, where the business case might be and how we can help you to, um, to, to develop that. Uh, but before, before we start, we will start with, with a brief recap of what we discussed yesterday. But before we start, I would like to uh, ask everyone to uh, introduce themselves briefly. Uh, so say your name, say something about the organization that you represent. And very important, if you could already give an indication uh, of the question whether you are considering to take part in uh, tomorrow's Dragon's Den or not. I think that would be great to know uh, at this point because also then we can make best use of this time to uh, support you and if needed uh, make uh, offline uh, sessions uh, in the rest of the day and of course also keep in mind that at the end of this day we have the pitch uh, training session that Jasper who's also on this call will uh, will lead so my own name my own name is Jan Willem den Beste I'm senior advisor uh, conservation finance at IUCN NL, IUCN Netherlands Committee. It's the Netherlands chapter of uh, International Union for Conservation of Nature. Maxime uh, is my colleague. We're doing this together. So maybe Maxime, you can uh, introduce yourself and then uh, I would invite all of us to uh, introduce each other. Yes. Hello everybody, this is Maxime Eislin. I work for IUCN in the Netherlands. I'm a colleague of Jan Willem. Uh, yeah, so together we work on uh, various projects to mobilize climate finance. Um, so last year we've introduced the Dragon's Den sessions as part of the CBA. Uh, Jesper was also there um, yeah, to develop the capacity of participants on how to sell their projects to investors. And, it was really nice to do because you really uh, learn a, a new skill set on how to structure your your ID into an investable uh, project and you learn how to pitch it to uh, to others. So yeah, I'll, I will be working with you today to uh, help you with, with your business case and I will be also joining the session tomorrow. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this is Mir Anwar Hussain from India. Uh, I'm uh, a monitoring and evolution officer, DRCSC. Mm. So let let me check that tomorrow uh, uh, in this time. Uh, I'll, uh, I will another session or not, so I'll confirm uh, during this period. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, Debbie, is it possible to make sure that uh, everyone that speaks, that the video of that person is also showing up? Uh, yeah, so the gentleman just spoke didn't turn the camera on, so I can't spotlight them, but um, when right. you speak, if you turn your camera on, that would be great, and then I can focus you. Yeah, yeah. So if the connection allows, then please uh, switch on your camera when you speak. That would be great. Thanks. Lorraine, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Lorraine Potter. I volunteer with the Inga Foundation. Um, it's an organization, an NGO that um, promotes Inga Alley cropping. Um, and no, I'm not planning to participate tomorrow, but I just want to soak up as much today as I can for the future. Thanks. Okay, okay. great, great, thanks.
Uh, hi, everyone. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, uh, my name is Juliet Grace and I'm from Uganda. I work with a media NGO, it's called the Media Challenge Initiative. Our work basically revolves around media development. I submitted a pitch uh, that, and I hope to pitch tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. We also, we already had some context, so you're definitely uh, in the list for pictures. Great that you're here also, thanks. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Yeah, my name is Samuel Abreke. I'm from Nigeria. I'm the founder of Inovia SDG Ops. Uh, we've been leading solutions, local solutions on uh, climate change adaptation, uh, community based solutions, nation based solutions as well. And it's good to be part of this. Uh, we are part of the Africa Circular Economy Network as an organization. And we are also part of the uh, global CBA. So we look forward to engaging. Thanks. As much as I look forward to learning from Mazin and every other member. Although I did get a request to make a pitch uh, on my mail or via other platforms, I would like to make a pitch as well. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Abu Siddiq. I'm from Black, Bangladesh. Right now, I'm working for Black uh, Climate Change Program as a knowledge management and communication lead. Uh, tomorrow, I might be engaged in another session. So, it, not, it will not be possible for me to join tomorrow here. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Greetings to everyone. Hello. Um, hi, my, my name is uh, Benazira Moto uh, from Kenya, working for Umande Trust. Uh, we do environment and climate change initiatives, governance and advocacy, and uh, social enterprise uh, programs. So this is my first time attending a CBA, uh, but I'm also here to just learn and just uh, soak in uh, on the business models because we intend to roll out a social enterprise uh, model program that is still in the development. So because of that, we will not be able to make a pitch, but uh, I'll be willing to see and participate in this process. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, very clear. OK. Uh, uh, my name is Ineza. I'm from Rwanda. Um, I'm part of uh, a youth coalition and a youth NGO. Uh, tomorrow, I will, I will be available to make a pitch, because uh, I think this, uh, this is the right time for, for more youth uh, action being uh, shared on the global space. Uh, this is my first time to participate in the uh, Dragon Dean, even the CBA, so I will learn and then participate at the same time. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Jewel Mahmoud. Uh, I am working at International Center for Climate Change and Development, ECAD, based in Bangladesh. I am working at Locally Led Adaptation Program as a research officer. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, if we, I don't know if we've got everyone, but of course it's also completely fine to introduce you after my short presentation. So if there's no one else. Briefly, yeah. Sorry. And just very briefly, Jesper Hornberg in the lead on innovation and scaling at GRP. And I'll be doing a session this, um, well, um, in a few hours, it's my evening, but, but I guess it might be morning for, for some of you. Um, and I look forward to meeting you there. Thanks.
Yeah, for those who want to do a pitch tomorrow, uh, the session that Jasper is uh, leading, what is it? Uh, five o'clock UK time or six o'clock UK, UK time? Um, five o'clock UK time. Five, five o'clock UK time. It's of course uh, very helpful uh, to, to join that session if you're making a pitch tomorrow. Uh, but of course, also if you don't make a pitch tomorrow, it can be a very useful skill. Uh, you know, in this world, we all have to pitch in some form or the, or the other every now and then. So it's always good, even if you're an experienced pitcher, to to have uh, uh, training like that to uh, sharpen your skills on that. So uh, great, Jasper, that you are having that session in a few hours. So uh, I just want to do a quick um recap of what we discussed yesterday so i'm going to go really fast through this uh, uh because this should really be about uh, we all as participants having a conversation about our work and how we can develop business cases so it really should be an exchange so uh, yesterday we talked about okay what is what is actually a business case i mean everyone's talking about it these days or at least a lot of people so a business case is basically a bit of text and, and often also some, some figures that, uh, first of all, um, uh, explains why you want to do a certain project or why you want to set up a company. There's always a reason, of course, as an idea that uh, is the start of, of some innovation or some new product that you want to uh, sell or, or produce. Um, and the product, product can, of course, also be uh, information. A product can be something technical, but it can also be something that you grow. And a product can also be um, uh, a measure that creates a value that uh, has uh, social and an environmental value along with some economic value. Uh, the business case, very importantly, uh, gives insight uh, into the financial and economic part of things. So once more, it is very often an idea and a value that is non-economic plus an economic value. And you know, even the most commercial companies, they always have a story to tell. Even Apple, even WhatsApp, these, you know, for example, these new companies, yeah, it's a technology that they produce and, 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 and uh, contraptions. Uh, but uh, of course, they also have a story behind it. Why you need this? What 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 it brings to you in your social or or otherwise uh, other development? So the business case uh, captures those values, but of course, the financial and economic part is very important. And finally, the business case is crucial for a potential investor that you would like to ask to invest in your project. So it's it's really a crucial thing to help them to make a decision. Next slide, please. So then to make a business case, uh, there's a certain tool that can be very helpful because business case is, is complex. There's a lot of bits and pieces that you have to put together uh, in order for an investor to make that decision. So the business canvas is, uh, can help you to make sure that you tick all the boxes that you need to have information for uh, to make a full proposal to an investor. So again, it's a communication uh, modus. It's something to communicate with. Um, it also, by giving it a sort of spatial outline, it, it makes it a little bit easier to oversee what are the different components and how they relate. And yeah, if, if, you, if any of these uh, components is missing, then, then you still have some work to do. So very quickly, it starts with what is your value proposition? What is it that you sell? You sell a product, but you also sell an idea. Why is this sustainable uh, cocoa good for, you, for the world? Why would consumers want to have your sustainable cocoa? Or who is going to benefit from an irrigation system? Can be all kinds of things but there's always a value and a benefit that someone might have. So that someone is, is your customer. Your customer is the person or the organization that, uh, that benefits from your product. So Debbie, if you uh, click through, it will, um, uh, it will show up. So it's very important. 
that's the first part also for this Dragon's Den tomorrow. Who actually benefits from your product or from your service? Uh, because uh, also surfaces, even ecosystem surfaces, can be sold, such as carbon, that can be sold as, as, as uh, offset or, or biodiversity offset. So there's all kinds of uh, products and services, but, but who are you going to sell it to? That leads, of course, to how do you create a relationship and maintain a relationship to these customers? Next click. Uh, very important, of course, you have to reach somehow your customers. You have to uh, communicate to them via media or via, via other means. Um, then key activities, what are the different steps and what are the different uh, activities that you need to do in order to be able to create that product and bring that product uh, to, to the market and to make sure that what you propose can be done. Next click. Um, what are the resources that you need? You normally, if you, pr if you produce something, uh, you, need, um, you need information, you need a network. Uh, you, you, can, you can never do it all by yourself and you need uh, technology, you need data. And of course, in the end, you also need uh, finance, most probably to, to make it happen. Next click. Uh, key partners in all these different components of uh, the business case there's there's various partners that can be crucial for you to to make this work next click uh, last but not the least yeah, again another click uh, the channels through which you are uh, getting the resources that you need and the channels that you need to get the product to the customers that will benefit from it uh, is also crucial. And then finally, the cost structure. The cost structure is basically all the costs that you uh, incur and uh, all the different revenue revenue streams uh, that, that you will get. Uh, and of course, your costs should be somewhat lower than uh, your revenue streams, because if your costs are too high, then you don't have an income. And of course, a lot of our products will not necessarily be a business case. And that's of course completely fine because there's a lot of capacity building work, a lot of uh, en uh, environmental education, advocacy. There's a lot of work that will depend on public finance and philanthropic finance. So we also should uh, look very critically which parts of our works can be a potential business case and which part of our work we just need regular grants from from governments etc next slide so we have this dragons then tomorrow uh, where we invite you to uh, uh, present your project uh, that has the potential to uh, to develop into a business case and again i want to be very clear if you have a project that in the short term uh, wants to find public finance or development finance grants from NGOs, uh, that is also okay to pitch. Uh, but we, we are looking for those proposals that with that grant or public finance can in the long run work towards uh, scaling up through private finance and through having a business component. For example, if you if you if your project wants to restore forest, natural forest, or mixed forest production and natural forest, then you will often need grant money for the beginning. But then at a later stage, you might have various products that can be marketed and that can create an income. And if there's an income, then can, there can be a return on an investment if an investor wants to invest in it. Next slide. So tomorrow we have this Dragon's Den. It, mean, it means that we have one and a half hour, there's not a lot of time to have any, anywhere between five to 10 of you and some other partners that are not now here, uh, 10 to five people that will pitch their idea. That does mean that your pitch will be very concise and short. It basically means that depending on the number of pitches, we have to decide to limit the pitch to three to five minutes which also means three to five slides at the most and this session 
uh, is to help you um, get to the basic elements that you need to present what your case is about. Who is, what is the value that you create? Who benefits from it? What are the activities to, to develop this? And the four people that you see here will be the dragons that are going to ask you at least one critical question. And together in the end, they will decide who's going to be the winner. And the winner is going to be uh, announced in the plenary session, the, the closing session on Friday. Next slide. So the criteria that the dragons are going to use, they're going to, to look very critically at these four, five uh, criteria. So first of all, your project should have a climate impact. Uh, preferably adaptation, because that's what the conference is about. But often you will see that your product has, project has both adaptation and mitigation impact. The second thing is that the project should, of course, not be detrimental to other uh, sustainable development uh, issues. Preferably, your climate project also uh, contributes to other sustainability um, issues, such as water, biodiversity, gender, youth, etc. The third criteria that the dragons will look at is, of course, is there a clear business case? Or is there a clear idea for a potential business case in the, in the future? So once more, we will not be very, um, very stern on this particular one, but we, we do prefer uh, for this exercise to look at projects that, look, that have a potential business case in the future. Scalability is, is, is very much linked to that potential for business uh, scale up. Uh, business, a business case means that if there is a return on investment, it means that you can scale up your solution uh, in a larger area and to a larger number of people that would normally be possible through, uh, for example, regular public finance. Last but not the least, any investor is very interested in your team. They want to see that you have uh, a group of people around you with the right expertise and the right knowledge. Uh, and they also like to see that you already have some track record with that team. So in your pitch, it's very important to give them a little insight into the team that you have behind you. Next slide. So yesterday we had the introduction of the business canvas. Today, we help you to work on uh, your business case. Tonight, as we said, we have the pitch training. Tomorrow we have the Dragons Den itself, which will be uh, noon, 12 noon uh, UK time. And Friday we announce the winner. Next slide. Uh, to summarize, uh, we, we did look at that business canvas, which, which has nine different components. Uh, of course, we are trying to make it uh, a little bit easier for for this exercise because we don't have a lot of time and your pitch is very short. So imagine if you're standing in an elevator or you're sitting in a restaurant and the person next to you asks, oh, hey, what is your, what is your project about? Or what, yeah, what, what is your work about? Try, try to imagine that you say in very simple terms in five minutes, what the problem is that you try to solve, how you are working on solving it, and how you uh, uh, reach impact, positive impact on climate and perhaps other uh, sustainable development goals. Why is it that this particular solution is new and important? Uh, and then that thing about the potential business case, what, what is the economic value that you're creating with this product that you're producing? And who do you think might benefit from it? Who might in the future perhaps pay for it? And then finally, who are in your team with whom you're doing it? So try to bring it down to simple language, not too technical, but try to at least uh, cover four to five of, of these five points. Next slide. 
I think that's actually my last slide. So first, I would like to ask if, there's, if there are any clarifying questions at this point. And after that, I will ask Ineza, because she already prepared a little uh, teaser for her uh, uh, business case, so that we can already respond to, to one example. But before I, I give the floor to Ineza, I would like to ask if there's any clarifying questions, anything that you thought was unclear in, uh, in my presentation and anything unclear in this process towards uh, the, the Dragon's Den tomorrow. Please open your microphones or your video if your connection allows it. It's very silent. <laughs> but um, if there's no question, then why, why don't I ask Ineza to, to tell us something about the idea that she is thinking of pitching tomorrow? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so um, the idea I'm, I want to pitch is uh, addressing the conservation in, uh, in the rural area in Rwanda. So let me start. Uh, Great. Yeah. The word is uh, is investing in sustainable development, but the rates of uh, achieving this de development is uh, is not on a constant manner. Uh, we find that the global south rural area um, they are facing uh, much uh, they are facing uh, they are much more behind in achieving this uh, this development because it is a, they have uh, other issues in their community that make it hard for them to participate. Our project aims to protect the natural forest located in community sector in Rwanda through empowering a youth cooperate, cooperative to sell the natural honey produced uh, in the local market. This will be done while, in, while uh, creating a, a community-based fund to support women and girls to access finance in their social economic development. We are interested in SDG 13, 15, 5, and 8, and all related decisions of the UN United Nations. Our concept is innovative as the youth uh, is the youth-based uh, solution created for, for women and girls to have a voice in the development and a microfinance uh, ability in, the, in their capacity and knowledge. We need $5,000 as a grant for the first year and we have a sustainable method based on the sale of produ uh, producers' products such as honey and handcraft materials. Our team is made by four youth, two males and one two females. Uh, we, are lead we are lead by a female with a background in environmental engineering, environmental policy, leadership and business administration. Thank you. Thank you. If everyone opens their microphone, we might have uh, applause. Uh, thank you very much. This was uh, very courageous of you to uh, to take this first uh, lead. And uh, before I'm saying too much, uh, because I would like to 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 give the floor to to everyone in this room to to ask you questions and give responses. But um, personally, I think um, I'm 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 really impressed because you you ticked. I think. Uh, all the, the 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 components that we just saw, and you did it. Uh, I didn't take the time, but you definitely did it in uh, less than five minutes. So, very well done. But um, but of course, we are here to learn. So, uh, I would like to open the floor to uh, to anyone who has uh, a question or a response. Please. Maybe Maxim, do you have uh, a question? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, in, in, indeed, it was very 
a very nice story. Um, uh, one one question that I have was that that the climate impact was was not so clear to me yet. Maybe you can elaborate a bit on that. Good question, Inesa. What, could you could you tell a little bit more about the the exact climate impact? Is it adaptation? Is it mitigation? Is it both? Um, I think it's a it's a little bit uh, of both because we we are mitigating the deforestation of uh, the the forest due to oh sorry I'm oh, sorry um, I was saying like it's a it's a kind of both because we are looking on how to mitigate the deforestation rate in the forest but also uh, giving a, an ability for the community to adapt for the change by, by also making uh, some green money for their development. So it's a kind of both, but yeah, I think I, I need to make it a little bit much clearer. In the, yeah. Yeah. It's also okay to say uh, there is both climate, in, climate mitigation and adaptation impact, uh, but we need some more time, and that's maybe part of the pilot, to uh, quantify it and to make it you know, into something measurable. So that, that's, of course, also something that you can say if you don't have all the details yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Anyone else? Uh, if, if I might add, you, you, you can also frame it in a way that, that you explain how you reduce climate risks to, for instance, people that live uh, in the area or for the feasibility of the business case. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Inez, for the presentation. Um, my, my immediate comment would just be on the introductory bit on the value proposition. It was not so clear on my end what the because kept mentioning problem a lot. So if you can just also define that problem clearly. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks, Benazia. Benazia, do you also have a, a project yourself? that you would like to pitch or that you would like to discuss in general? I, I, um, I also logged into this for the first time because I'm also new to CBA, but mm. uh, we, I didn't put in any pitch, but a few things that come into my mind is that I am part of a programmatic communication platform that is uh, looking at uh, communicating issues of uh, climate change and also adaptation. And so we are a team of uh, from different countries. Uh, we have Kenya, Tanzania, uh, Mozambique also involved uh, with different pra practitioners from different fields. So aiming to increase capacities of community to adapt to uh, various initiatives, but also to create awareness and information to both the right holders and the duty bearers. So working with the government and also the local community to push the climate change adaptation agenda. Yeah. Thanks. Interesting. Are there any other uh, questions to Inesa? No, oh, I'll, I'll just, um, uh, uh, pun intended, I'll just pitch in with a quick comment. Um, good presentation. We'll, we'll cover more um, uh, later today. Um, but uh, just immediate feedback, I think it was well balanced and you spoke with confidence um, and you did touch on a lot of the things that I will highlight uh, in the session um, later today. So well done, thumbs up. Yeah. Inesa, Thank are you also in the pitch session today, uh, later today? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm, uh, I'm curious to hear who else has... Uh, is is maybe inspired by this one and uh, and has perhaps your own project that uh, that could maybe also be turned into a pitch. Do 
Loueda, would you like to jump in? Uh, hi, uh, this is Juliet Grace again. I don't know if you can hear me very well. Very clear. Okay, no, my internet yeah. is, a, is a little bit shaky. Okay, sure. at the moment it's, it's very clear. Okay, uh, so thank you very much, Ineza. Like, you've made me brave as well to be able to share about my own idea that I have. Uh, so like I mentioned, I work with a media development organization. So basically one of the challenges that we have is how do we communicate about climate change in Uganda? You find that, that there's a very huge information gap. And also because most of us who are into these spaces, we use a lot of jargon. The language that's being used to communicate climate change is not really relatable with the people at the grassroots levels. So the idea that I'll be pitching is a climate media van. So what this media van will be doing is we'll be going into communities and basically telling people about climate change and how it affects them, but then also getting their stories because it's the farmers that are most affected by climate change issues. But then if we are able to understand what their challenges are and the problems they are facing, then we are able to work with them to come up with solutions that they can work with to ensure that they adapt and also mitigate climate change. So basically that's where the idea is. So the van will be to promote awareness, also use media as a tool, but then also for conservation or tourism because you see, so now the conservation tourism is the aspect that brings in the money because when we uh, engage in tourism, most of us use cars that emit uh, fuels, but then say you're going to a place to tour and then you plant a tree, you're definitely contributing to the climate change conversation. Uh, also introducing technology into communities to ensure that if a, person, a farmer tells their story and their story is aired maybe in the news, probably organizations that support those farmers will now come to actually support them the more. That's where the idea is. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, that was also definitely within five minutes. So very clear uh, outline of what's the problem, uh, what is your solution, with whom are you uh, working on this? The, the one thing that, I'm, uh, uh, that I would ask, if I was a dragon perhaps, uh, I would ask who who would be your customer? Who would is there a product in your information in your uh, media outreach? Is there a product or is there something that that can be sold and that can help recover some of the costs? Uh, so my target customer are two people. First of all, because I work with a media development organization, I work with journalists and journalism students. So them going to the field and collecting the, these stories, their, their capacities are built and they're learning on that job at that moment. But yeah. then also the people within the communities whose stories we are telling are also my other target uh, audience. For the students, for the journalism students, we'll make sure that we have a relationship with the universities where the yeah. universities are able to actually facilitate us to go with their students to the field. So that now yeah. that's now the business aspect. That's where we are making money from. A student pays like $10 or $20 to be a part of that team. That's where we are making the money from. Also, when we document these stories, there are organizations that we can pitch these stories that we've documented, and then they can pay us for the content that we are producing. Yeah, yeah, that's very clear. That that's indeed two, two potential customers. I was wondering to what extent the, the tourists are also uh, uh, a customer that maybe can pay for, for a part of it, or are you going to take tourists in your bus, for example, or? Uh, so the tourists become our customers when we take them on the tours in our bus. That's how we are now yeah. including them as potential clients because yeah. Uh, also, the other aspect why we are including tourism in this is because domestic tourism is not an aspect that has been well promoted in my country. 
Okay. So how, yeah. how do we get Ugandans to travel at a low cost budget? So that van yeah. will enable them to actually travel but low cost. Excellent. You, I, I hear a lot of values, a lot of different values for different for students, for journalists, for local communities, and also for local tourists. So I think that's, uh, that's a very uh, interesting component that is, as we see, uh, and as we have seen with the business campus, a crucial component. So it's, it's very interesting that you actually do have uh, three potential uh, means to, to generate income. Are there other uh, participants that uh, would like to uh, to ask questions, give advice, give comments? Yes, I, I have a question. Because, yeah, there are a lot of uh, good revenue streams. You can make a business model out of it and contribute to sustainable development. So that's all great. What What is not so clear to me yet is what you will ask from an investor. Are you going to ask a grant uh, uh, and 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 how how large should should the grant be? What uh, requirements uh, should should the finance have? Yeah, so that's my question. What are you going to ask from the investor? Good question. Uh, so I think at the moment we are looking at our grant to be able to help us scale out for the first one year, so that. When we, uh, when we use this grant, then we are able to identify, clearly identify the revenue streams and also build them in the process. So for now, it's a grant that we are looking for. Uh, how much would it be, the grant? Uh, we are looking uh, for between 5,000 to 10,000 US dollars. Yeah. Okay, great. And very clear, very, um, very well defined case. Uh, final question is, of course, are you in the pitch development uh, session later today? And yes, I am. Great. And are you going to pitch tomorrow? Yes, I am. Fantastic. So that's two pitches uh, along with a few that we already have. So, uh, so very good. Thanks. Thanks a lot for this uh, clear uh, story and uh, yeah looking forward to to hear the the pitch tomorrow thank you very much for the opportunity you're welcome so very inspiring uh, of course we are uh, very interested to hear more stories more plans but it can also be a question for advice uh, no anything the this is the time that we you know have created to uh, to learn from each other to advise each other etc yeah rachel hi everyone um, great presentation, Luede. I'm Rachel from Botswana. It's my first time to attend the CBA. And um, you presented a really good um, business. But I would want to ask you, um, because we are in um, a period of COVID-19 where um, a lot of interaction is interrupted and we have uh, measures that are in place to avoid um, social um, relationships amongst people. So how is this business going to be sustainable in this period of um, COVID-19? How do you intend to uh, make it work during this period? Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, I, one of the things is we don't know how long COVID is here to stay for, but uh, as an organization, we've already been doing some work. We are doing a documentary, a documentary series where we are now reaching out to media houses to find out how they've been affected by the COVID season. So what we do basically is we highlight uh, or pick on a few people from our team who go and interact with these people. So 
we choose not everyone, not everyone goes to that field. So basically that will be the same area, uh, that same approach that we'll be using. The other thing is uh, the Ministry of Health, we will be working closely with the Ministry of Health to understand, okay, which areas have been affected, which are the hotspots, which areas can't we go into, because that can also help us really understand where to go, which communities to interact with and which communities to stay away from. But then we also, one of the things that we've adapted is working online. So that's also a component that we can basically incorporate in our work and how we do things. Thanks, um, Rachel, for that question. Rachel, do you have, uh, what, what, what are you working on yourself in uh, in day-to-day -day life or in a potential project? Um, I work with an organization. It's a non-governmental organization. It's called Climate Exploration Hub. Um, we work with, with communities and youth in my country to uh, promote um, social enterprises that can um, work towards adaptation to climate change. We have an annual hackathon that we hold every year for youth, for them to be given a chance to come up with um, businesses that um, are more um, adaptate, more friendly adapt for to, I mean, to adapt to climate change in, in the country. Mm. And we have um, so far about 11, uh, participants were youth who have come and pitched um, in our organization and are already having their businesses that are um, operating in the country. And we also work with uh, village development committee committees um, in the northern part of our country. We develop a adaptation mm -hmm. plan for them that mm -hmm. they can use to work in their areas. Yeah. So, but I don't have anything that I'll be pitching today. Uh, maybe next year we'll definitely be ready yeah, to share yeah. with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds very interesting uh, what you're doing, and um, it would indeed be interesting even to to hear if some of your uh, the persons, the, the youth and the women that you're working with um, have projects that could could uh, could also uh, develop into a business case. Yeah, there's yeah. something also to look forward to uh, for next year. Yes, and um, let me just say, um, it's, it, the, the COVID-19 outbreak has also been um, sort of a positive into the business sector and into climate change. Because, I mean, in our country, a lot of our fruits and vegetables were imported from South Africa. Now the borders are closed and there has been regulations that there will be no more fruits and vegetables coming into the country. So that means there's a high, high um, energy that is put an in investment into um, horticulture farming. So we are seeing young people, we are seeing women coming in and at least uh, with us in Botswana, fortunately, um, both women and youth have access to land to plow. Mm. So Right now, what is happening is the government is working with those who are initiating to get into agriculture to train them. So we are also working with the government to also include um, the effects of climate change and um, extreme weather conditions that they should be aware of as um, starting up uh, farmers and also to find ways to, to, to bring in adaptation methods into it and i'm currently studying um, I'm, I'm i'm having a research on the ground to find mm -hmm. out if these farmers who are getting into um, agriculture can afford to also now uh, invest in 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 uh, um, horticulture insurance for instance yeah um, yes um, as an adaptation tool that they can use in case um, they experience uh, damage of crops due to harsh and extreme weather conditions in the country. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. So that's, that's what you're studying academically. 
yes, it's um, I am doing um, training with SMHI and um, in Sweden mm -hmm. in this, and I'll be completing in October. So, yeah. oh, okay, okay, yes. yeah. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, of course, insurance, de-risking, these are all, uh, uh, yeah, interesting examples also of creating value that, that could also be linked to uh, access to investors. Uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a very in interesting example as well. Yeah. Who else in the room who hasn't uh, spoken yet has uh, a project or idea or a question to share. Is there anyone having seen uh, and heard of these examples? Is there anyone who thinks, well, I might be able to put together a pitch for tomorrow? Yes, absolutely. Who is Looking speaking? To... Yeah, Samuel. Samuel, hi. Yeah. Uh, look toward, uh, forward to pitching uh, some of our solutions already. It's an existing mm -hmm. solution where you started here. Yeah, um, it's on climate and community-based adaptation uh, using climate smart agricultural practices, like uh, climate smart irrigation systems, uh, hydroponics and then uh, urban agriculture um, methodologies. This uh, is a way of promoting uh, agriculture and then increasing access to uh, basic agricultural products in urban centers. So through hydroponics, uh, people are actually assessing uh, materials that are needed, for instance, to build a simple uh, scale farm, home farming systems, and some of these are uh, uh, climate smart and uh, friendly, pocket friendly solutions. So we we'll look forward to pitching this idea this evening or tomorrow. Great, sounds very good. Yes. So um, are, are you a part of the pitch training later today as well? Yeah, I should be joining. Okay. I'll be joining okay, by 5 very, p.m. Yeah. Very good. So do you, um, when, when you look at the five components of the, of, of, of what, what we asked to, to put in the, in the, in the pitch, is there any okay. component where, where you uh, need some advice or is there any part of the, of the, of the, of the components where, where you're in doubt or where uh, we, can, we can help you with at this point? Yeah, talking about the, uh, the scalability company. Yeah. yeah. And then the business skills, uh, scale, business skills and the idea for potential uh, future business engagement. I would like to uh, state clearly that uh, when it comes to scaling uh, these ideas, I think uh, one might find challenge, but if already it, uh, it is workable on a small scale, mm -hmm. which of course we've been able to achieve uh, through the uh, urban architecture, through uh, agricultural architecture model, uh, mm -hmm. scaling would just require that uh, we put more, uh, more inputs to places where uh, our inputs, uh, our inputs derivative for the beginner case can just be multiplied depending on the number of uh, replications we want to have. So I really, really need some uh, economic uh, understanding of the economic values and then the costs right. and all, all of that. So th this is something that that you need um, you need inputs in 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 the long term, right? It's not something that we can uh, we can solve this afternoon. Okay, okay, that's that's going to be calling for uh, the aspect of um, the what uh, the aspect of supply chain. Yeah, supply chain management and all of that. 
So uh, when it comes to uh, getting inputs like, uh, for instance, um, climate smart uh, irrigation system, for instance, uh, we'll be needing uh, technologies and um, the, just, just a second. Uh, there's, and, uh, that which and most times are not locally sourced, and then for the uh, just a moment because there's a lot of uh, disturbance on the line uh, because in some in one uh, place there's a lot of uh, background noise. Okay, is that in your own place or? Was yeah, otherwise, it's at the I, I guess in your it's own place. Right. Okay, okay, yeah. Then we can't do anything about it. Yeah. Okay. Go, okay. go ahead. So can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. It, it's a little bit difficult okay. to, uh, to follow. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, okay, I'm trying to minimize the, the noise as much as possible. So, uh, speaking, like I said, uh, when it comes to uh, supply, the supply chain for the development of the smart irrigation systems, uh, most of these uh, pump settings are actually within remote areas yeah uh, from cities and that so getting getting to transport some of those uh implements or uh, tools for developing a climate uh, and a solar a solar garden is actually a challenge as yeah. well as much as most of these peasant farmers do not even understand uh the use of it so uh in the long run uh, it's going to involve as, as, as it has been explained in the pitch, it's going to involve a lot of uh, idea, uh, teaching, and then uh, the awareness, creating an awareness and training and retraining, as much as it's going to involve uh, a lot of partnership in the future for, mm. for suppliers and then for technical staffs to be engaged and then to be trained on how to use some of these implements and sustainably uh you know in a way they can actually protect them from damages and corrosion and all of that yeah but you you already have demonstration projects right where where the intervention yes. already works yes 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 we have yeah yeah so and I'm, I'm happy to uh to talk offline a little bit further about the details but uh, to me it seems that you have the the elements that are that are clear uh, to to create a pitch for for this particular session so um but maybe we can uh, we can have a time uh, after this meeting uh if if you give me your your email address in uh, in the box in the chat okay, box okay. then i will continue to to afterwards it. Because there's a lot of details that you that you mentioned now that um, that are a bit a little bit difficult to to address right now. So right. if if I get your email address, then I will I will contact you. Well, I would like to open the floor also for uh, for questions or suggestions from uh, from the floor. Yeah, anyone that um, that recognizes something uh, that uh, you know of which you have knowledge that can that can support Samuel or or a question that you have, then uh, please. Do so now. Well, if there's no question, then then I can uh, maybe elaborate um, a bit more on what to ask from an investor, because there was a, a question raised in the chat box uh, to get yeah for. Um, so, basically, there are three stages in. Uh, in uh, yeah, the three stages for, for financing. You have the very early stage, um, which is basically the startup phase in which you really do your research and develop your, your uh, product or your service. And then you have the expansion phase in which you become more mature. You will, you generate some profit and you expand your business. Mm -hmm. And then you can, the third phase is, is that you can go international for instance you can go to, to the stock market um, I think that that most of these are, are these that that I hear are in the early phase um, and uh, uh, financing um, sources uh, 
should be, uh, I think, mostly raised from subsidies or uh, from uh, crowdfunding then, or you can get some finance from, from uh, incubator uh, initiatives. Um, or some impact investors that, that do not want to have a return, for instance, uh, philanthropy. Um, and then if you really have a viable product, a viable business case that, that generates re return and you make a profit, then you can think of raising loans, for instance, or uh, using venture capital or engaging with private equity. Um, yeah, and then if you really can go to the stock market eventually after, let's say, 10 years, then, then you can uh, engage with an investment bank who can then invest in you. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that a little bit more. It's all about in which phase you are. And I think we're now in the early phase, so I would focus more on uh, getting subsidies or crowdfunding or uh, philanthropic money to get your uh, projects financed. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very right what you say. Um, most of, of our projects and also what, what I hear in this group will be... Um, um, you know, the, the first point of call would be ground funding to, for example, do the first pilot, uh, etc. So, um, but again, it's, it's, it's good to also think about how in the future, uh, what components could be, uh, could be commercial and could uh, create a, a cash flow and what might be needed for that. Yeah. Is there any, any other comment or question uh, to Samuel? Hello, sir. Were you asking? I make an input. So, sorry. Were you asking? I make an input. I was. I was asking if anyone had uh, a question or a, or an advice uh, to to you, Sam. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Samuel, are you in the pitch uh, session later today? Yes, I'll be joining. I'll join the pitch session later. Yeah. Today. Okay, so then, then we can also uh, discuss further. All right, sir. Yeah, okay, thanks. I think we have time for uh, one more case. It's also okay if you don't uh, think you are going to pitch, but if you just in general would like to share what you're working on, what the questions are that you encounter, and what you could learn from, from this particular approach. No one? Um, hi, Benazir again. Yes, hi. Um, yes, um, like I mentioned, we are, uh, I mean, I've, I've just been listening into the conversation and also wondering um, how do you create a synergy between because I'm wearing two hats within the programmatic communication platform, but my organization, we also deal with uh, the biosanitation technology and we intend to close the sanitation loop uh, by using the uh, I mean, waste for biogas and even briquette production mm -hmm. um, just to help address issues of energy. But mm -hmm. then you find that uh, in the absence of communication, all these adaptation 
initiatives that we're talking about do not get scaled up, they don't get adopted. So then on the part of the communication platform, how do we, uh, can I say, model it to be mm. a business uh, so that uh, the team can, I mean, the various, the, the varying team can, can uh, tap into the, I mean, opportunities that are available there as you also reach out to different people with key messages uh, yeah. on issues of adaptation. Yeah. Uh, but then on this other end, where we are looking at issues of the, say, the briquette production or the biogas production, uh, still grappling with the issue of, uh, I mean, scalability, because you have the behavior change and mindset that is also uh, encompassed with it. Because when you're talking about uh, using a readily available resource, in our case, we use human waste, but we also use other type of waste. Uh, so you find that uh, getting into the market uh, with part, some of these products also becomes uh, a challenge. So you have one end where we have a software project, which is now the communication. How do we turn it into a business model? And on this other end, uh, breaking the barriers to ensure that your product also becomes a viable and scalable business, looking at the end, end products. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know whether I said too much. <laughs> no, no, there, there's a lot of different uh, components that you mentioned, but if I understood you well, then uh, you see that uh, communication, the lack, the, the absence of communication uh, uh, skills and, and opportunities can be a barrier for scaling up. Right? And, uh, yeah. and the question is how you could, providing that communication, make part of, of, of a business proposal. Yeah. Um, well, I think what, what, you, what you say uh, illustrates how important communication is in this, because it, it has to do with, uh, with reaching your uh, clients, but also it this is also part of the channels in the in the business campus. You have the channels uh, through which you reach customers, but also you reach uh, uh, suppliers, etc. Um, but but the other part of the question, I think, if you if you understand, if you identify that this is a main barrier that people need, then of course you can think of marketing that component because. If I understand you well, you say that a lot of projects are not scaling up because of the lack of communication. Then, of course, you can market your component uh, and make that work for different projects. That actually would be an interesting proposition in itself, <laughs> I would say. But that's that's what I. Um, what I do, what just comes in my mind. I don't know what 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 other uh, people in the room have to say about this. Jesper, because it it also connects to to the messaging and to the communication. Do you do you have does something uh, pop in in your mind? Well, I'm sort of taking notes on some things that I will stress mm. a bit extra uh, later today. Yeah, but without going into too much detail, clearly there is value in being able to create something like that, and it does come back to what you already talked about which is um, what is the value proposition. And if there is a value yeah. proposition, you have a role in fulfilling that value proposition, then fine, you have a model that, that could actually work. Yeah. Uh, it, it comes back to, um, to that for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. So if I could contribute, uh, this is Juliet, because I work within the communication sector uh, being a media development, working with a media development organization. I think one of the most important things is uh, packaging that 
communication that you want to really channel out and to your audiences because one of the things that we've really identified in the time that we've been in, in existence as an organization is different audiences require different uh, models of communication in that even when we are packaging communication for journalism students, we do not package it the same way we are packaging it for journalists. We do not package it the same way we are packaging it for the guys mm -hmm. in the civil society unit. So I feel mm -hmm. like that's an area you will need to look into very deeply and then also understand, yes, you're saying communication, but what exactly do you want to communicate? What kind of message do you want to send out? The moment you're able to identify those gaps, then you're able to really scale out because for us when we are started out we are saying uh, journalism students are not given the opportunity to be able to find their footing within the employment space but what are they lacking we figure that universities some universities do not have uh, spaces that allow them to practically uh, practice the things that they are learning in school so we bridge that gap in the beginning we're like okay let's give them the practicality skills that employers are actually looking for. Once we figured out that, then we are like, okay, what are some of the areas that we are not communicating in well? Uh, then we discovered that climate change is one of those areas that we are not communicating in well. So last year we had an expo on reporting on climate change and adaptation in Uganda. And there the feedback was really good in that now we're seeing even mainstream journalists are now taking more proactive action in reporting about issues on climate change and the environment as well. Mm. Yes. That's great to hear. Yeah. Uh, quick comment. Yeah. Um, I uh, pasted the, the link uh, to the, if you want to uh, submit your pitch uh, application. Yeah. So the link is in the chat. Uh, and then just now I also pasted um, um, a URL that will link you to various uh, COVID-related support mm -hmm. around the universe. Globally, so you'll have to pick your, your region. Uh, you might have problems with the URL though. Uh, my, my, you need to copy the whole thing and paste it into your browser, otherwise it will not mm. take all the way. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Maybe a question. So if I submitted my pitch, do I have to submit again? Mm -hmm. When I was registering, I did submit something. Do I have to do it again? Or oh, that's okay? That's okay. I, I received it. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, so we have that information. So now the main thing is to work on the pitch and uh, send the pitch to, to us uh, by tonight, preferably, or tomorrow morning. Uh, and Amyas, I think you, you are going to, uh, to collect the pitches and stay in touch with, uh, with people, right? Yes. We'll yes. Maxime, you go. Oh, no, please. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I have, I'm awaiting everybody's. Uh, so by th hopefully this evening when everyone has uh, developed their pitch and become a little more comfortable with their presentations. Um, I'd like, to, I'll, I'll try to receive everything before the day closes uh, so that tomorrow morning we can put everything together, yeah. But if you get into trouble uh, and if you have to make changes to your, to your presentation tomorrow morning, then uh, do let us know so that uh, we see if you can still send uh, your adjusted PowerPoint uh, in the morning because the session is only starting uh, 12 o'clock UK time. So of course, if by 10 o'clock you, you have uh, a, a fresh version, then just uh, communicate with Amyas yeah. to, uh, to see that your uh, presentation is in order. I'll be attending the evening session as well too. So you yeah. see a familiar face, yeah. 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 So we are uh, nearing the, the end of this session. Um, I would like to, uh, to, to make sure that uh, anyone who still has a question or a comment can do that now. So any question about the procedure towards the Dragon's Den or any clarifying question or any idea that you, that you wish to make, then uh, please do it now. Um, 
I just have one small question. In case, mm -hmm. uh, in case you have like two ideas that you want to pitch, what's the, what can happen? Um, preferably you, it should be a different organization because I think it's, it's not fair to have two presentations from one organization, but if it's a, a, a different organization, then that's no problem. I mean, like, for example, I can pitch for uh, one from one organization, I mean, to, yeah. and the one from one organization, I mean, to, but I would still be the same person, but under two different organizations. If it's a different case, then, uh, then that, that should be possible. Oh, okay. If it's a different project, yeah. Thanks. Uh, maybe I wanted to tell Jasper that the link he has shared is not loading. I don't know why. Yeah, so you need to you need to copy the entire URL, otherwise it won't work. Um, yeah, I, I've copied the, it all and then like contact the app creator. That's the feedback that I'm getting. So uh, when I do it from uh, from the HTTPS, uh, uh, I, I copy all the way down to uh, relief. Okay. And that, that should work it. Let me try again. I, I know people have problems with this. So I'm, after a while, I understood that it's that's what you need to do. I bookmarked it on my side. So um, I, I did. I tried it again just now. And it says error. The COVID resource 134, etc. app did not load successfully. Please contact the app creator. That's very annoying because I get it to work on my side. <laughs> um, but I'm doing I'm doing it on a computer. Is is it meant to be on a on a mobile device? I'm on my computer. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's not. Um, are are you meant to be signed in to the app sheet uh, no. platform? No. Okay. It just I just click the link and it works. Um, huh. Okay. I didn't I didn't click the link. I can try that uh, because well, I just copied. I will try to sort this out for the evening session. <laughs> yes. I don't. Uh, Good thing we tried now. Yeah. But it's working. It's working. Uh, mine, it's... mine gives an error. Oh yeah, me yeah. too. It's an error. Did not yeah, it to... it seems to connect, and then it says error. Mm, yeah. I'm gonna try a different version of the URL and see if that does the trick for you. It is so annoying when these things don't work. <laughs> So uh, <clears throat> yeah, the whole link here. So you need to have the plus dashboard included. So finally, um, well, just just in, interject if you have if if you have something else to say about the app. But uh, otherwise, we have to start um, closing the session. And uh, I will say something uh, before we close. To, uh, to about about the rest of the process towards pitching. Um, please do uh, stay in touch. Send your uh, pitch PowerPoint to Amyas. Does everyone have the uh, email ID of Amyas? Otherwise, Amyas, maybe you should uh, uh, write it in the group chat. I will also write my email so that you can always uh, contact me as well in case um, you need uh, some additional support or have a question. Is everyone that has a pitch idea also joining the pitch creation session though? Because then I could yeah. do that at a later stage, later on in the day. Yeah, I and think what, as, as I understood everyone uh, that uh, uh, expressed that is, is doing a pitch that, that we discussed today yeah. uh, right now is also in the in the pitch session so yeah so i'll leave that to later actually i can put my details in for now yeah put your details just to, to be sure that, uh, okay. that that is uh, there with everyone um so yeah and uh, the session tomorrow the dragon sense dragons then session is of course also open to the audience so it's not only the, the pitchers that, uh, that should sign up, but if you're interested to listen to the pitches, listen to the dragons, responses and questions, uh, then do join the session because we do need an audience. 
and uh, and then of course the winner will be announced in the final closing session on Friday. So uh, so do also take notice of the, who uh, will be the winner. Um, and uh, yeah, so as we have said, the, the pitch training session tonight is uh, is very important. So uh, do join. And uh, so she will. So we will definitely see each other again. Um, thanks a lot for being here and for uh, all the contributions and uh, draft pitches that we were able to uh, to to follow and uh, and for your questions. So thanks a lot and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing each other again in other sessions or in other uh, meetings. Thanks a lot and good luck with everything. <laughs>